I think I should become a priest, so I want to go to the seminary. Uh, classes start in one month. Hmm. My father slammed with his fist on the table. Over my dead body. <laughs> when I decided at a relatively young age that I wanted to go to the seminary, it was the year 1979. And I had always been a good student at school, was always very much interested in mathematics. My father was an architect and he saw in me already the son who would follow into his footsteps, becoming an architect as well. And that was also my interest in many ways. And then suddenly the thing came up of becoming a priest, going to the seminary. I still remember that I was talking to my bishop, presenting myself, saying, I want to become a priest, I want to go to the seminary. And that my bishop had a whole discussion with me on what I exactly thought that priesthood was all about. And then somewhere in that conversation it came up that he asked me, he said, and what did your parents say? And I hadn't mentioned it to my parents yet. Because I knew what the reaction would be. So my bishop said to me, well, you know, before we continue with this whole conversation, maybe you should go back home and at least speak to your parents. So I took a train back home. I remember still the journey going back home with my heart beating, sweat in my hands knowing what was going to happen next. So I came home, and I think my father and mother were already home, and so being very undiplomatic as I was, by the now I'm a bit more skilled in my diplomacy, <laughs> at that point I just threw it on the table. I said, uh, Mom and Dad, I have something to tell you. And my mother, my mother, she, you know, as mothers are, mothers, they know their sons, she was already, I could see, she was already shaking a bit because she could see from my face I was going to tell her something which probably she would not like. <laughs> said, uh, Mom, Dad, um, you know, I have to tell you something. Uh, tell me, what, what, what do you want to tell us? Um, you know, now the, 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 the neighbors, the oldest daughter was about to marry. And so I said to them, let me just try it from the back. So I said, now, Dorothy, that was the name of the girl, ugly by the way. <laughs> but finally, and to everyone's surprise, she had found a husband. <laughs> and so um, I said, you know, uh, you know that Dorothy is going to marry very soon. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It wasn't like two, three, four weeks time. So I said to them, to, to my mother and my father, I said, now if she waits a bit, then maybe I can preside the wedding. So my father and my mother looked at me. What do you mean? Preside, you're too young, you cannot marry her. I said, no, 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 I don't want to marry her. For God forbid, I mean, she was 50 years older than me. No, no, but you know, like, you know, when you go to church, who presides the wedding? And I could see the face of my mother that the coin dropped. I said, no, 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 She said, no, 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 no. And my father still didn't understand it because probably he was still busy, busy with designing some kind of house in his head. <laughs> as, as men do generally, like women, be careful with men because women, women, men normally do not listen. Men, we always are with our thoughts somewhere else. So anyway, so my father saw, you know, I, you know, okay, I, uh, I think I should become a priest, so I want to go to the seminary. 
uh, classes start in one month. Hey. My father slammed with his fist on the table. Over my dead body. <laughs> Over my dead body. You don't know what you're getting into. You have no clue what you decided. You're too young. You go to the university, you finish the university, and once you're finished the university, then we talk again. Not now. Yeah, but... No, 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 no. We don't discuss this. We are not going to discuss this. And my mother, yeah, my mother, as women do, she was just crying. <laughs> so then I said, okay, let me not go further into that because we are not going anywhere with this at this point. So after a week, I tried again and I tried again and trying to get them used to the idea. And my father slowly but surely started to understand that basically I was not ready to give up on this and that I started to move ahead in spite of him saying no. By the way, that is what boys do at the age of 19, 20, 21. You will always do something which your parents do not like. And so I went to the seminary and looking back on it afterwards, I understood more than at that point because I was young, how much I hurt my parents. It took my parents a long time to get used to the idea. Maybe, by the way, for some of you parents, that is also the case. Maybe sometimes, even though you don't say it, in your mind or in your heart, you might even think, what is this son of me up to? What is this all going to bring? What kind of future will that be? And last but not least, will he be able to persist? Will he be able to be faithful? Because especially when you're a bit older and you have a bit more experience as you parents have, because that's why you are a parent, then you also know that life as this grass can be very muddy. In life. And that there can be many problems you had not even foreseen and challenges and pain and struggles and yes, you might get dirty because of the mud in life. And people might talk, as people talk in a parish. I remember how my parents struggled with all that. And just not long ago, I saw a picture again of me, still being very young, as a very young priest, 1987 accompanied by my father and mother to church. And you see still, if I look at it now, you still see the tension in their face. They still were thinking, what is this man up to? By the way, but that is the way mothers are then. At the moment that she understood I was going to be a diplomat in the church, because <sighs> that's the way mothers are, no? By the way, much later, much later, I was already many years a diplomat. I think it must have been end of the 90s, beginning of 2000. Both my parents died, by the way. At the beginning of 2000, once again, I had a discussion with my father on the same issue. And then he came up with a very interesting story. And he said, because my father was a very staunch and dev devoted Catholic. And then he said to me, you know, when you and my mother got married, by the way, my mother was a beautiful woman. <laughs> you can still see it a bit, no? <laughs> When you and my mother got married, we always prayed that one of our sons would become a priest. But we never thought of you. <laughs> because always I had been the naughty one at home. The 
one you had to drag to church, the one who didn't really want to. While my younger brother, who is the father of four himself now and the grandfather, he was the one. Who Even censorship is coming in at this point. But he was the one who should have been the priest. You see a way, in many ways, the plans of God are unpredictable. You plan, but then something unexpected happens and everything changes again. And that is true in marriage. All parents who are sitting here, they know about that. You go into marriage. You know, this, this good friend, I've mentioned it before, but this good friend of mine, he got married, by the way, York, Joseph, his name, and he got married, and um, a week or two later, we, 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 we 